Welcome to Talking Art today, our session in beginning of March. And we are absolutely delighted to have Victor Peralta here with us today. Thank you, Wendy. It's, <laughs> um, it's nice to be here on the lounge. Been, been interviewed on really, really uncomfortable, which is really nice. Yes, and we hope to keep that discomfort going so that he will talk lots and lots and lots. Well, let's see where we go, eh? <laughs> okay, so it, it, Talking Art is um, a program of the Blue Mountains Creative Arts Network. Uh, we've been having the podcasts and this program for about 10 months now. So we welcome you all today to the Carrington and to hear Victor and all of those who are listening on the podcast today. And what we do is we normally have the 30 minutes of chatting with um, our guest and then we have an open time for everybody to ask questions or to join in the conversation. If anything's come up during the time that we've had the conversation together, please feel free to ask Victor. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nothing, no, no nerves at all, I promise. Oof. Now, everybody here knows Victor, obviously. So people probably, some of these people may know you a lot better than I do. Mm, maybe. 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 I know um, Damien's had a show uh, at our gallery at 188. Absolutely. And so have you. Uh, yes. Yeah. And I, I think we've we've had people Convincing. in our life drawing room. Yes. Um, we've had we've got buyers in the room as well, yeah. which is Excellent. quite interesting. David actually bought a painting of mine today, which was quite um, wonderful. Quite, I, I suppose that's the word. Yeah, wonderful. I'm always in shock when someone who buys one of my art pieces. Um, and it was interesting because David goes, "Oh, you've got this piece on your web page, and it's these trees." And I thought, "Oh, well, it's, it must be one of these at the, this ex beautiful exhibition of miniatures we've got." hanging at the show in the gallery at the moment and um, he goes no no oh they're quite small aren't they and, and he described it and I thought oh oh no it's actually it's actually one of my paintings <laughs> we had a bit of a chuckle and and the poor soul bought it so it's, it's, um, it's really it, it's odd I just I, I have a difficulty um, well, we're going to talk about these artworks behind me today but more about the process of of an idea, as, as a creative, of an idea, the conceptual idea, and then turning that idea into reality somehow, and, and how that how that develops and sometimes changes in complete direction um, as the as the project goes through. But I, I I'm not an admirer of my own art. It's actually quite quite odd. I'm too critical of what I of mm. my work. So let's come back to that. Mm. But I, I, my, one of my thoughts about Victor was that people might be curious about what's brought Victor to Katoomba, what's brought him to Gallery 188, what, what was the energy or the thinking behind setting up a gallery space that is so oriented towards helping artists exhibit their work and making it like a community space. Do you want to go back and yeah. give us a bit of history to... Yeah, thanks Wendy, that's a good question. And, and we often get asked this, by, especially by artists as they come in. Um, I guess for me, we've, we've been there now three and a half years. And five years before we opened, um, I had a, a last show, and I call it the last show because it was the last show in a commercial style gallery in the city. And I think we, any artist or any creative knows that the the old gallery um, uh, business platform is you know the 50 you know 40 50 percent commission is what you pay as an artist or what you get I'll use the word taken off you of your of your, uh, of your life um, and I had a very very bad experience with a with a particular gallery which happens not to be in existence anymore but at the end of it I said that's it I'm I'm done dealing with galleries and the attitude that we we as creatives get treated and I went no that's enough a five-year plan I'm gonna open up our own space and that that literally took us a it was a journey of, of business planning um, ideas and then in the last year we were going okay we need to find a location and I wanted to make it a location in town in, in town being Katoomba and our idea was to create a space that was not representing artists but more the word support supporting artists so 
you know, we, 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 we turn the business plan on its head and, you know, up, up to 90% it goes back to the artist during exhibitions. Um, and and that was, that's where how it developed. I just, I wanted to, to be a supportive gallery and give artists um, an experience which is where it should be when you, when you take a child, which is an idea, and create it into something. For, for me, it was a thought of, well, an artist should, should have the privilege of being able to be supported and developed and assisted in bringing that idea to the public because it's a, quite an emotional process. Mm-hmm. And there's some artists in the room here and, and to actually, to put your, your heart and your soul out to the world to criticise is quite a traumatic experience for some. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and for us it was, I don't care where you studied or who your, your representative gallery is, I want you to show me your work and if we can help you develop that and develop you as an artist and as a creative, then you know you're, you're welcome to, to come along with us and, and on a journey. Mm-hmm. And I and I think we, I think I, I wouldn't say we finished achieving that yet, but we're certainly more than halfway there. Well, there's definitely the impression in Katoomba that you both, as co-owners, co-managers and of my wife the space, and I, yeah. yes, your wife and I, your wife and I, your 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 wife and you. <laughs> um, this sense of welcome and our warmth that surrounds you both. You go into the gallery and you're immediately greeted warmly, you're made to feel at home, which is often not what happens in galleries. It's not, it's not. I remember um, an experience I had in, when we, I was looking for a place to showcase a, a body of work that I exhibited in the city and I came and we were up here at the time and I I came up here because I wanted to show that body of work here and the manner in which I was treated by this particular gallery owner was was pretty appalling I don't think he actually looked up once while flicking through a magazine trying to get my background and I think that's that's not a very pleasant way so it's something about being I think as a as a society uh, even more so now with with technology we've forgotten really how to interact with people and I think that's, you know, we, we let people peruse the gallery. We don't interrupt them. We let them welcome themselves to a space without being pressured and, and uh, intimidated by the fact that it's an art gallery. I think that's mm. important. That's very important to us. Well, when you go in there, it seems that people feel quite comfortable about wandering around. Mm. Um, you know, like the fact that there's a shift here, I think, that happens, isn't it? With some galleries, you sort of look in the window and think, I couldn't quite go in there. It looks a little bit precious. It looks a little bit like I would feel out of place. But I notice when I go in there, there's always people just wandering in, mm. wandering in through the door, coming in. They either know you or Sharon, and they'll, they'll stop and have a chat, or they'll just look at the artwork and have a wander around, which is really special for a gallery because it makes it then really accessible to people, mm. people off the street. Yeah, and I think, I mean, our visitation, I think, is somewhere in, in it's over 10,000 um, annually. So it's, I think I think it's bouncing around between 10 and 12,000, which is which is quite a number for a little humble space. Yeah, yeah. Um, or about, I think, homeless people at Central Station. And you, you get this concept of an idea and, it, and it, it sits away in your brain and it bubbles and, and carries on. And then eventually you go, OK, I need to do something. You get that urge that I was talking about earlier. You get that urge that you just need to get this project out and you get all these images in your head and you go, okay, well, that's, that's where that project goes. And for this one, it was all about, um, it was about homelessness and about people that live homelessness every day and, and how, they, how they progress from that. Um, and for this one, it was interesting because the project was, was intended to be um, 22 big portraits, like this big heads, um, and then it was also a videography, catching, capturing a video interview with a homeless person and their life's journey, how they got to be homeless and da 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 da. Um, and eventually, and I had these visions of, this. my idea was, I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out to Central Station and I'm going to talk to all these homeless people, get their photograph, have a chat to them, uh, you know, sketch them, sketch their faces. And of course the reality of all of that, you know, being in places that could possibly be dangerous, 
you know, the, the, the initial concept, which was massive, really got whittled down to this idea, which really was just canvases and a couple of interviews that we did, um, which, were, which were so traumatic. I thought it was going to be an easy project, and I think as creators, you, you think of these ideas and you go, okay, well, that's great, but how, how is that actually going to happen? And your idea starts to get more, more narrow and then may even snake along to different, end up in different, in a different mm -hmm. location. So for this idea, um, which I don't think I've still, I'm still finished with it, but it, it went from this documentary, this doco, you know, and I, I could see it going to the ABC and all these sort of things to just literally uh, eight paintings and two videos. So, and I think we were talking about this earlier, I think as a creator, you need to be able to accept the fact that whatever project you come up with, whatever that initial idea is, will change and develop, and then eventually it'll come up to a finished product, and, and you need to be able to nurture that and accept, accept the message that you're trying to yeah. portray will develop to, to something else. It, it will perhaps um, be different to your initial message that you that you first yeah, the first concept of the idea. So, and I think your your work is kind of the same. I think yeah. in regards to the weeds project that you had. Well, I remember having a conversation with you at the exhibition I had last year at your gallery around my garden and the vegetables and things, and saying how difficult I found that. And you yeah. were so patient in the conversation, and you talked about oh the pull of the moon and the feminine and all this sort of stuff, and I'm going. <laughs> but it was really interesting because it actually allowed me to step back from my work and the intensity of the work to actually think about what else is going on mm. here. And I wonder too whether when you start with a project, and if, if there'll be others here who'll understand this process, that there'll be some intensity that will intrude into the yeah. process that will have such a strength of its own that you can't avoid it and it actually diminishes the other things around it. Yeah. So that you actually are pulled into some, some sort of vortex of. of, of I remember of, that. I remember the conversation. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. I mean, I, th I think, it, and as I'm a big believer in the universe as a as a big bit of a joke with us all, because I think that there is an intent already on the cards that that we all sort of have to, have to live through, and in in the case of this project of the homelessness project. Um, I had this idea, and, and there's a book back there which I'll show you guys a bit later. And it was about um, about sketching homeless people on the on the commute down to Sydney every day and so forth. And then the project started, and I was on the train coming home, and I and I met. Well, I didn't meet. I was very rudely eavesdropping on a conversation that um, that Trevor here was having on the phone about a rally for homeless men. Um, and he was talking about the, to, to whoever he was talking about funding and about this and about the other, that there's, there's a huge uh, population of homeless people that live in the Blue Mountains. There's something like five or 6,000 people that live in the outskirts of what we call suburbia up here, I suppose, for lack of a better term, in, in, you know, in, the, in the bush. And I thought, I've got to talk to this guy. And it's really funny because, it, the, like I said, all the planets aligned and I... I made contact with him and I told him about my project and he said, yes, that's fantastic, blah, blah, blah. He gave me his number, which I promptly lost. And then I lost, and I, and I saw him on the train every day and he disappeared like a ghost. I didn't see him for about three years. Yeah. And then I was talking to someone in Katoomba here that runs a soup kitchen and we were talking, and I was somehow in conversation, the project came up and she goes, oh yeah, that's Trevor. Trevor works with us, and I thought, holy sugar, that's um, that's the universe going. Okay, so back then the project wasn't ready, but now now go ahead, and it actually developed from that. And I think, as the conversation was with you, I think sometimes things things do interrupt, do get in the way, but it's perhaps because the universe is not quite ready for your message that you're trying to bring out as a creative. I think I don't know. It's an interesting one. It is an interesting Maybe one. we need more coffee for that one. <laughs> On this thing we, we call a face, this landscape. And the lights, the, the skin and light is really, it's, it's odd. It just doesn't, it doesn't actually make any logical sense. My other, my other um, career is, a, is an engineer, so I'm quite logical in things and quite, you know, there's a, rule, there's a rule for everything. But when you look at the way that 
that the human figure is, and the, especially the face, the way that the light falls on faces doesn't make any sense. The way that the shadows are cast on, especially on the nose, it seems it, it just nothing's quite right. And I'm intrigued by it. So, so p portraits and figurative stuff is what I love. But you know, every now and again, I get I get the idea to paint a landscape. Not many. Can so I you're quite lucky. If, if that ever feeds into your engineering and architectural work, that you tend to look at a building through the chiaroscuro, through the way the light falls on. Yeah, it, quite often. To the structure. Yeah, quite quite often. More often than I should actually. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I'm going to force you to talk a little bit about the process. I know we, I yeah, we didn't we didn't quite talk about it. I so don't, I don't really need a, an art lesson. I'd actually be interested in how you came to paint in the style. Of and I think we, we, we were, yeah, we were, we were kind of talking about this uh, briefly yesterday. So my initial, my initial um, method of painting was the old traditional master's way, which was layers and glazes and, you know, six months later you're still painting the same bloody painting. Um, but of course going back to the issue of all of my kids and trying to get stuff done before somebody goes, you've got to get off that easel because it's my turn, <laughs> um, that it, I came across um, a method which is called alla prima, um, which in Latin means at the first. So wherever, you, and it's, these are all oils, and, and I, I love, I'm addicted to oil painting, which is probably not very good for me, but um, when, you, when you paint with oils, when you, when you put in, in this technique, Alla Prima, when you put the brush down at the first stroke, you can't muck around with it, you can't shift it or you can't move it because you're painting wet on wet. So if you muck around with it too much, it just turns into mud, and I think for those of us that are painters, you kind of understand that. Um, so it's it's quite it's a little bit of a difficult technique to and I won't say master because I'm far from it but to actually to actually get the concept of how that works. So for these I I um for the urgency of the project because I'm trying to capture a portrait from a live sitter um, like Trevor here I painted in two hours two and a half hours um, and there's a, there's big brushes a lot of palette knives. And it's just about trying to capture that image as quickly as you can before it changes. And with that other technique, you'd have to get the sitter back yeah. over and over and over again. And, and I um, paint quite late at night from about, for some reason, when the moon's up is when the brushes come out. So between 10 and 2 or 3 a.m. is when I paint. I sleep for a couple of hours and then off I go to work and do it all again the next day. So, so this guy... Um, it was impossible to, for me to get him back and sit for you know hours on end at midnight, so I painted him um, in a studio just up the road here at um, on Katoomba Street. In in two hours, he just sat. I, I gave him a book. I go look, just read this, and, and it's actually interesting because I I painted I painted him, and I realised that there's no, even though he was probably the most settled out of all the people that I, and he's a, such a gentle soul, Trevor, but I noticed that there's no. Um, there's no light in his eyes, mm. and it's something that I hadn't picked up until I brought it down today. Mm. So I don't know. I've signed it, so it must be finished. But <laughs> maybe, perhaps it's not. Um, whereas the other, the other yes. pieces have got. There's. It's quite there's, different. Yeah, it's yeah. quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, and I think it was a conversation that I was having with Trev about. Um, and he's a he was a long term homeless person of about fifteen to sixteen years, being as a homeless man. And, and finally making it out of that, out of that, um, out of that situation, where he'd met a he'd met a lady, who was on the verge of getting married. They've, they've now bought a house uh, further up the mountain. So it, it's quite interesting that there's a lack of light there. But painted quite promptly, quite quickly in that in that style, um, which I almost all my paintings are like that now. I, I find that technique quite satisfying. Um, the the portrait up at the cultural centre I, I painted in two days, so it's a big piece of tarp to mm. cover. But mm. yeah, and I, and I in, don't in your laundry. Uh, <laughs> that one no, that one I actually painted at the gallery because I the, the bloody canvas was so large that I couldn't get it out the door at home. So <laughs> I thought I'd better paint it here at the gallery. So and I think the arch is going to be painted in the same in the same style. I think that, that you, I th there's a there's a certain texture to painting in that technique as well that I'm quite enjoying. One of my one of my favourite painters is Lucian Freud. A lot of people hate his work, but I love just that textural, not necessarily the manner in which he's painted, but the textural work of his is very tactile. Yeah, very tactile. Mm -hmm.